Canopedia is one of the largest public databases for cannabis and hemp genetic information. In addition to being a genomics resource to the public community, Canopedia is also where medicinal genomics customers will get access to genetic reports for samples that they submit for either sequencing or genotyping. To date, there are over 1,200 registered strains in Canopedia. In this video, we'll walk you through the redesigned Canopedia website and highlight some of the key features. Hitting the registered strain link at the top will bring up a list of all publicly registered strains in Canopedia. Strains are presented in a session date descending order. You can toggle the order by clicking on the arrow next to the sort by category. You can change the sort by category to either grower or name by clicking on the sort by category, and you can also toggle the sort order of the other categories. On the right hand side are search parameters that can be used to further refine the results viewed on the left hand side. For example, click the add parameter button, scroll down to THC 8%, enter a value of 15, and then click the update results button. What you'll get in the return search is every sample in our database for which a chemotype for THCA has been submitted and which is greater than or equal to 15%. You can also toggle the directionality of the sort order with the arrows that are to the right of the sort by THCA% percent parameter. Parameters can also be stacked on top of each other to further refine the search. For example, if we want to search the database for anything with a THCA% percent of greater than or equal to 15%, but also a CBDA percent of less than or equal to 5, we just add that as an additional parameter and update the results. Note that the results of what is populated on the left hand side has changed to reflect these two parameters combined. Lastly, we'll add one additional parameter to further refine the search so that we have any strain name that contains the word lion. We'll update the results, and the two results that are found are the two Jamaican lion samples that are in Canopedia. One is for CANSIP90 and one is for whole genome sequencing and we'll look at those in a little more depth. We'll start by taking a closer look at the whole genome sequencing report for Jamaican lion. The name of the strain is on top along with the unique identifier sessioned in our Canopedia database, some information about the submitter, sample name, a session date, reported plant sex, and the sequencing or genotyping technology that was used to generate the genetic report. We've introduced a lot more search functionality into Canopedia. Several fields in a Canopedia report now have an embedded hyperlink. If you hover over these, you'll notice to the right of the term, a search icon appears. Clicking on any of these links will do a database-wide search matching that particular term. For example, clicking on the Medicinal Genomics link will give us all samples where Medicinal Genomics is the submitter. Whereas clicking on the Gender Female link will give us all samples in the database where the plant sex was reported as being female by the submitter. The rarity plot shows how common your sample is compared to all other samples that have been submitted to Canopedia. A top-heavy plot indicates that a sample is rare, whereas a bottom-heavy plot indicates that a sample is more common. In the next section of the Canopedia report, Chemical information for the strain is presented where this information is available. This information is collected from the submitter at the time of sample submission. The genetic information section of the report reports this plant as being a type 2 plant, meaning that both the THC and CBD synthase genes are intact in the Jamaican lion genome. To the right of this are several files available for download that represent the results of the whole genome sequencing that was performed on the sample to generate this Canopedia report. The VCF or variant call format file contains genotypes for the 800 million plus positions in the Jamaican lion reference. The annotated VCF file contains only genotypes which differ from the Jamaican lion reference. The annotated VCF file also contains annotations showing which genes overlap the variants as well as any details pertaining to any protein coding changes that might be present. FASTQ files contain the raw sequencing reads which come out of the DNA sequencer, while the BAM files contain the mapped positions of those reads to the Jamaican Lion reference and what was used to generate the variant calls which are used in the analysis in the Canopedia report. The plot on the left shows the heterozygosity distribution for all samples in Canopedia, and the line shows where the current sample we're viewing in the report falls on this distribution. 
Since this sample is a Jamaican lion clone, it's expected to be more closely related to the Jamaican lion reference and therefore has a lower heterozygosity percentage that falls to the left of this distribution curve. A sample that's more distantly related to Jamaican lion will fall to the right of this distribution curve. Breeders can use this heterozygosity information as a proxy for assessing seed line stability. A more stable seed line will have a lower heterozygosity percentage and will fall to the left of this distribution curve. On the right hand side is the Y ratio distribution plot. Scientists at Medicinal Genomics were able to determine which regions of the cannabis genome belong to chromosome Y by sequencing the Jamaican lion father. By taking the total number of reads that map to Y, and then dividing that by the total number of reads that don't map to Y, you're able to calculate the Y ratio and take a distribution of this over all samples in Canopedia. The plot shows Y ratio scores for two separate distributions. In red is a population of known female plants, and in green is a population of known male plants. The line shows where this sample falls in relation to these two separate distributions. A line that overlaps the female distribution is more likely to be female, and a line that overlaps the male distribution further to the right would be more likely to be male. The next section of a Canopedia report has next generation sequencing coverage over key cannabinoid genes. The patterns of deletions in these genes indicate the type of the plant. In type 1 plants, active CBD synthase is deleted and there's no next generation sequencing coverage over the region. In type 2 plants, active CBD synthase and active THC synthase are both intact. And in type 3 plants, active CBD synthase has coverage over the region showing that the gene is intact, but active THC synthase has no coverage over the region suggesting that it's deleted. There's also a fourth type, type 4, in which there is neither coverage over CBD synthase or active THC synthase. Inactive CBD synthase is in close proximity to the active THC synthase gene is being tracked because of its proximity to give a sense of the size of the deletion. Cannabichromine is another gene we track in Canopedia which may or may not be deleted. One interesting feature of cannabichromine is that it may be responsible for synthesizing THC in cases where the THC synthase gene is deleted. This would be a good time to point out the key differences between a CanSnp90 and next generation sequencing based Canopedia report. A CanSnp90 derived Canopedia report has much of the same content as a sequencing based report. The key differences are in the genetic information section. Note that only the annotated VCF files are available for download, as the other file formats are specific to sequencing technologies. Deletions and key cannabinoid genes are also presented and a plant type is called based on the patterns of these deletions. However, the nature of the data necessitates that the information is presented and analyzed in a different way. Each genotype called in the CanSnp90 chip has a log R ratio score associated with it. A deletion can be detected using these log R ratio scores across multiple variants in a particular region. The average log R ratio scores were calculated for samples detected as having these deletions and samples detected as not having them by using the sequencing data. Then the correlation of the log R ratio scores and these averages was calculated. A sample with a high correlation to the average of the deleted samples likely has a deletion in this region and a sample with a low correlation likely has that region intact. Note that for CanSnp90 we also have several Y chromosome markers on the chip. The sex of the plant is determined using this same process since a female sample represents what a male sample would look like with the Y chromosome deleted. Underneath the deletion plots is a table that has the summary of deletions showing the actual correlation scores for this sample to the population that has the deletion. And it has the actual cause whether the deletion is intact or deleted and for the plant sex whether the sex of the plant is male or female. Underneath the deletion summary are two tables showing a summary of variants detected in the sample, showing point mutations that are predicted to have a moderate or high impact on protein functionality. And in the first table, we've got a, a THC, CBD, and CBC synthase variants. Underneath that is a list of variants for 40 genes that are curated by scientists at Medicinal Genomics thought to play an important role in cannabis genomics. So these would be important genes in cannabis and 
and mutations that might affect the functionality of these genes. The variance table can be sorted on a particular column using the arrows to the right of the column header name. Additionally, there's a search box in the top right hand corner of the table that can be used to search any text contained within the table and filter the results based on that search. For example, if we're looking for any variants that fall on Contix 700 of the Jamaican Lion reference, we simply type Contix 700 into the search box and we only see variants on Contix 700. Likewise, if we want to see only variants which have a TC allele, we could put T slash C into the search box to display only those. A description of the gene can be displayed by hovering over the gene abbreviation in the gene column. There's also a Unipro link which links out to Unipro where there's more detailed information describing this particular gene. In the next section of the Canopedia report, we're showing you the closest genetic, genetically closest samples to your sample compared to everything else in our database. And we do this by taking a list of high quality variants. There's about 4,000 variants or so that are filtered with the high, high QC, QC values, uh, high sequencing depth of coverage across the reads, and ones that are found in the population with a certain minor allele frequency. We take those variants and calculate a distance between the sample and Canopedia and everything else in the database. And then we rank these distances to show you which are the most similar and which are the least similar. And so on the left hand side, we're actually showing you uh, the nearest relative to Jamaica, Jamaican lion, uh, which is the sample that we're looking at in this Canopedia report. And it's based on every publicly available sample in Canopedia. That's what, that's what you're viewing on the left hand side. You will also see any private samples, which also you are the owner of if you've elected to have private Canopedia reports. Now on the right hand side, uh, it's a little different. It's showing what, we're, what we call the base tree. And the base tree is a set of strains that we have in our database that for the purpose of calculating distances, we always keep the same base tree. And the idea was just that as Canopedia continues to grow and, and some of these samples that are in the database will continue to grow as well, we'll always have that stable base tree that can be used and referred back to and, uh, and can be used to compare samples to one another and have that kind of stable comparison set that we can use as, as kind of Canopedia grows. Now beneath this, we have the opposite collection of tables, which is showing you uh, what is the most genetically distant strain from Jamaican lion. And similarly, uh, what are the most genetically distant ones from the base tree? And we have these plots that show the sample of interest uh, as well as kind of giving you a graphical representation of what are the most similar and what are the most distant samples to your sample. In this final section down here, we have the nearest genetic relative in the Phylos data set on the left hand side and the nearest genetic relative in the Lynch data set on the right hand side. Now these are two data sets that we downloaded from NCBI. It's publicly available data and it's just some additional databases that we've added for comparison purposes. So you can look at uh, for these public data sets, which sample is calculated as being the closest to your sample. And if you click on the link, you'll actually be taken to NCBI to that particular record for that particular uh, sample set. And you can get additional information about the sample by exploring these, these links on NCBI. Now at the very bottom, we have blockchain registration information. Now, what is this? Um, what we're doing is we're taking the genetic data, the uh, VCF file, I, specifically, we take that and we calculate an MD5 sum for it, which is a unique identifier for a particular contents of a particular file. You can take that unique identifier, which is called a hash, uh, a SHA sum hash, and encode it in a blockchain transaction, um, which is what we do. And so the blockchain tra transaction ID is something that is submitted to the blockchain. You can click on it and it's a decentralized database that medicinal genomics does not have control over. 
and it will store your hash sum in the blockchain in a decentralized database. So what you can do is if you ever need to prove to someone that you had a particular strain with a particular set of genotypes at a particular point in time, you can refer to them to this blockchain transaction. And the only way to get that particular hash sum is using that exact file that was generated as part of the Canopedia analysis that's in the Canopedia report. So someone could download that file, they could do their own hash sum of the file, and then they could reference the blockchain to prove that you had that strain at a particular point in time. We also have the details of this blockchain transaction presented in this PDF file, which could be printed out and given to someone, uh, presented to them via email, etc. It's just a nice way to kind of summarize the whole transaction. This concludes the walkthrough of our Canopedia redesign. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. Our contact information is on the screen, and we'd be happy to help answer any questions you have. Thank you.